preparing your door for priming, undercoat and final painting. Don't underestimate the preparation that's needed and I'm going to show you how to prepare and paint your wooden front door for a flawless finish using this new door that I just did in a previous video which I'll link at the end. Now let's start with the essentials and choosing the best paints for our door primer and undercoat and of course our top coat. I'm going to compare a water based system and an oil or solvent based system here because probably like you it's the front door to my house and along with durability drying time is going to be a factor. Resistance to ultraviolet, water resistance and preservation of the door substrata. So why is drying time so important? Well we need to get the door off its hinges and laid flat for the best finish which means I'll have no front door on the house never a great thing. Sure you can paint the door in place on its hinges in its vertical position but even water based door paint and especially solvent based paints are going to have a bit of a slump. It's not like painting a wall inside your house with emulsion and because of the difference in the way the paints are made up. Every day you and your house guests are going to look at that front door and drips and slumps staring back at you. It will just annoy you and make it look rubbish. Do it right and add some value and some class to your biggest asset and investment, your own house and build better things. Now you're setting up yourself to fail if you don't prepare properly so give yourself the time and let's talk about preparation. Let's get hold of some cheap sawhorses like these ones and set them up in your garage or a spare room with old sheets that you can throw out after the job. Take the door off along with its hinges still on the door and set aside the screws. Here I'm blocking up the door with some OSB board secured on the inside with 80mm number 5 hex wood screws through timber studs and into the existing door stops to provide the stiffening. Not perfect but secure enough for the couple of days that this paint job will take. And back to the paints now and when it comes to primer you want one that has excellent adhesion and seals the wood effectively but in this case whilst allowing some porosity for new timber. The new timber's got all sorts of things still inside it. It's still essentially an organic product and therefore we want to be looking for some sort of microporous paint. On top of that because time is important I'll always go for water based paint and I can second coat in hours rather than waiting 24 hours between coats and whilst it's an option to use separate primer and undercoat layers I've seen no difference in durability by using a combined primer and undercoat. The technology of paints has come on so much over the past 10 years or so. However if it's an oil based undercoat that dries quickly and provides a good base for the top coat is a great option. This primer is what I use in that case except I've never found one that works for me that I can recommend here for such an important step to ensure smooth and even final result. Plus for a period door such as this and like many front door designs with all the grooves, joints and rebates the high voluminous and sometimes high pigment nature of oil based paints it can dull down the sharpness of the door's proportion so for the undercoat like the primer before it I'll aim for water based and now it's possible to get primer undercoat combined in one product and the performance is as good if not better than separate primer and undercoat layers. Of course there's a bewildering range of manufacturers but this water based primer undercoat from Crown is my pick. You'll need no more than a litre for two coats for a single door and it's recoatable within a few hours which is fantastic. Another option is this primer undercoat from Farrell and Ball which is a little bit more expensive but again you only need a litre. It's a fantastic tried and tested performance for sure and a top tip to ensure maximum colour accuracy is to get your primer undercoat paint tinted with your final chosen colour rather than the default white and if you're buying from your local decorator supplier they'll usually just do it for free as you're buying their paint. So I'll give them the code could be a RAL colour or a BS colour or from a swatch or brand and they'll tint it in their machine. Perfect. For preparing my timber door once it's laid flat on my sawhorses I'll sand off any existing paint and fill any gaps 
then sand off again. For a brand new door I'll use an 80 grit sandpaper to start followed by 120 grit and this simple sander works great and costs very little but I've got these recessed panels and mitered belection moulding. The triangular sanding attachment with this Devault multi-tool is perfect for sanding and getting a great finish and, and getting into those corners. In fact I cannot recommend a multi-tool enough. It's great for so many woodworking and building tasks and I'll leave a link in the description to this one I use and like. Get the surfaces smooth, go over with a fine dry brush to ensure there's no dust and we are ready to go. Now for applying the primer on the coat, I'll have a one and a half inch quality brush for painting my mouldings. But for the flat areas, I always use these mini rollers. Choose the medium pile, which I can buy in multi-packs and start with the brush paint in the, with using long deliberate strokes in the direction of the grain for the mouldings and recesses. Then use the roller. The temptation with exterior painting is to overdo the thickness, do the opposite, put on just enough to cover it evenly and build it up in separate coats. That's what gives it its durability and at the same time its sharp finish. I'll aim to get the first coat on first thing in the morning with the second coat going on in the afternoon and because I can't afford the time to dry out the roller if I wash it because of the water that it'll retain I'll just use a new roller for each coat. I'll give a final sand with 240 grit, clean everything up and be ready for the top coat in the morning for hanging in the evening. That means my door is only going to have been off its hinges for one night. Now on to that top coat and this is where you can let your creativity shine. Choose a high quality paint that is specially formulated for exterior wood surfaces. I'm going to go for this Farallon Ball colour for my top coat. I love the natural colour pigmentations they are able to create and the quality of Farallon Ball paints is just fantastic. This door is going to be on here for ages and I want this paint to last so I am never going to scrimp on the paint. Here I'm going for this flat green blue mix called Pigeon and I've been careful to check its compatibility with my undercoat. I'll apply it in the same way as the primer undercoat and in two coats. Except, top tip for you for a new timber door like this, because I expect a little shrinkage over the coming year as the new redwood timber gradually loses its moisture content, I'm sure these joints and miters might open up just a tiny bit. At that point, maybe next year, I'll fill any cracks, sand and add my final coat then. If you're using an existing door, you won't have these issues and just go ahead and add your final coat. So we're aiming for four coats in total, two of primer undercoat and two of our top coat. For a new timber door, it's three coats in total, two of primer and one of our top coat, with the final fourth coat and fill added in around 12 months. I'll replace the old screws at the hinges with these purpose-made door hinges. I use these ones from hinge type and get a friend to help you hang in the door and then put back any ironmongery and door furniture. And remember, proper preparation and the right products ensure a flawless finish that will stand the test of time. And there you have it. Your wooden door is now ready to impress. If you want to see how I built this front door from scratch prior to painting it, see this link here and see my other video here for how to choose the right levers, locks and door hardware. I'll also show you how to replace door stops and door architraves. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more home improvement tips and tricks and to build better things. Happy painting.